Hi, I'm Nahani, and I'm going to introduce you to the speakers at Camp Disclosure. Seal Walko is one of the founders of Camp Disclosure. She's an acupuncturist and a naturopath with over four decades of practice. As one of her assessment tools, Seal uses frequency-based quantum feedback along with the sound of your voice. Seal integrates multiple modalities, including homeopathy, Chinese herbs, and nutritional supplements to help people to rediscover that balance of a healthy body, clear mind, and peaceful heart. I see that you do a ton of different modalities. You've done just so many, it's hard to keep track of even how many you've done. I don't even know how you fit all that studying into your life. I, I don't either. It's a lot to encompass in a brain, but I started out um, as a massage therapist. I did that for 10 years. And then I went to acupuncture school and then I became a naturopath. So I've been practicing for almost 40 years now. So, um, and I got really interested in, um, bioenergetic medicine about 20, 25 years ago, and began to look at that. And so um, my work is kind of based on a lot of that. It's based on the shoulders of people like Reinhold Voll with the electrodermal screening. And also um, I'm interested in the sound frequency therapies. And um, so I, I found um, this the software that I've been using for the past couple of years uses um, the voice as a bioenergetic imprint to get information from, right? So we know that the body is pretty redundant. Um, you know, as an acupuncturist, we look at the tongue and we feel the pulses. Uh, we ask a lot of questions. We look at the facial complexion. Uh, you know, in reflexology, we're looking at the feet and, you know, we can determine information based on the, the feet or the palpation of the meridian pathways in the body and whatnot. Um, if you're into iridology, you're looking at the eyes. So all of these things are giving you information, right? It's kind of like uh, in, when I was in school, we used to call the body the black box, meaning that it was a mystery. We, we didn't really know what was inside of it. So we had to understand what was inside of it based on our um, skills of evaluation and um, perception, um, observation, that kind of thing. And it would give us information. And so, you know, so the ancients really had this information. They understood it. They knew how to ask the right questions, right? And I think it's a skill that has been lost in uh, Western medicine, we might say. So, so I, I got, I came upon the sound uh, software uh, based on the sound of the voice, and I started using that. And it's really remarkably perceptive. And uh, so it's using. Um, it's using a special software that's got algorithms that will interpret the voice recording and then compare that to um, other signals and, and then come up with a kind of um, uh, deviation based on the comparisons, right? So we look at things that are out of balance, basically. We look at uh, the highs and lows within a person's field. And we're talking about the bio field here. You know, we're talking about the energy field. So we're not doing blood or chemical analysis, but we're doing bioenergetic analysis with the person. So that's what we're going to be talking about uh, in the lecture that I'm going to be giving um, uh, at the camp disclosure. And I'm also, so we're gonna, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the history of all this, and we'll be getting into some of the history of people like Royal Reif and Hans Yeni, who was working with cymatics and uh, looking at how sound informs matter, you know, how this actually has an impact on all of us. So we'll be talking about that. And uh, then my, my intention um, is to actually create a group intention, a group goal with whoever comes to our class that we will take some time refining that and what that looks like and what that might feel like for everybody. And then I wanna do a vocal recording and a session using my software to actually create a group balance for everybody. So it's gonna be kind of fun, I think. It'll be a really interesting experience. And um, 
you know, we talk about <clears throat> how uh, I just want to bring in the idea that we, I think a lot of us really know that there are other higher advanced technologies that are potentially on the planet. We, you know, we don't, you know, we've heard this from other people telling us stories about their experiences with these things. I personally have never experienced that, but I, I, it makes sense to me. It resonates with me that there would be other um, higher being technologies that are already here present. Of course, we don't really have access to it, but I think that something like this, it's like, it's like people are waking up to the uh, awareness and the consciousness of the finer vibratory levels of how things operate in the physical world. You know, we are basically, um, we could say the three dimension, a third dimensional body is at effect of our thoughts and our emotions and feelings and things like that. So it's like, how do we become aware of that? How do we tune into that? And then begin to harness that for ourselves and for our ability to, to heal ourselves, right? So um, I, think that, I think that this work is like people are waking up to the idea that these things exist and they're they're getting downloads of how to create them right they're getting the downloads of how to create these energies these these uh these technologies these these inner technologies and then to be able to reproduce those so that we can use those here at this time how do you treat people with that do you have a sort well, of treatment? yeah so that's a good question um and i and i totally understand and agree with the idea of the mantra and the human voice and how powerful that is and uh, you know one of the things that I like to talk about and I'm sure you probably know this already but um, our voice um, you know our words are vessels for our intention you know mm -hmm. what is it out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh I think was once said and so um, we have the ability to um, create our reality create, create our uh, form to come to inform reality with the sound of our own voice and with other things you know I know that there are going to be other people there um, Arlen Ruddy is going to be using gongs and Tibetan bowls and this kind of thing to also change and shift frequency so this is a little bit different because the work that I'm doing is based on more of a digitized sound so it's bringing in things like the solfeggio frequencies the noje frequencies um, and the, uh, the balancing words that the balancing signals that are in my software have an, uh, an impact on beginning to entrain the biofield, the energetic field of the body into more of a state of balance. So when somebody listens to these frequencies, so once, once I do the session, once I get the information, I, I kind of call this information medicine because it's a lot about, um, for example, you know, like we'll be looking at things like the emotional level, you know, the emotional body. And, you know, so somebody's got uh, a lot of fear or anger or grief or anxiety. And then we'll look at uh, something like the, Bauer, the Bach flower essences. And so we might find, you know, the, some of the chestnuts come in to help to balance the anxiety in a person, you know, or, you know, some of the some of the stress and trauma remedies might come in to help balance the fear and the and the, and the uh, worry. So so we're using so we're using these frequencies that are so the the sound uh, the Bach flower remedies are embedded with these sound frequencies so that when a person's listening to the frequencies, they're actually getting the signal of these Bach flower remedies to help balance uh, and stabilize. Probably the greatest gift of this for me with this work is that I'm able to um, really unravel emotional feels with people and emotion, their, their emotional baggage, okay? Because we can look at past trauma um, and we can, you know, it, it'll, show, it'll show us that, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great mirror for people. It really reveals kind of where people are at mm -hmm. and it gives them the opportunity to kind of open up and uh, um, own what they're what, what they know they already know this is true about themselves for 
I would say in a, in a large part. Now there will be other unconscious things that show up too that people may or may not be aware of. Things that are, you know, like uh, programs. Um, this is one of the things that I really enjoy working with because we can look at some of the programs that are running in the background. Uh, these are like operating systems that are going on in the background that a person has picked up either through their early childhood training from teachers or parents or peers, you know, or they've gotten this from, I would say, pre-incarnational uh, experiences where they're coming in with a program uh, or a soul contract, right? And I, I know you know what I mean there. So, um, so they're coming in with these kinds of uh, programming uh, and, you know, it's like a it's like a virus or it's like malware running in the background of an operating system and a computer. You know, so once we can identify some of these things, um, and the person may know what what they are, they may not. It doesn't really matter. But then we can run a frequency for that uh, for that thing to begin to clear that out of the field of the person. So it, you know, people have have found um, significant benefit. With that kind of an approach, where where they're um, it's it's helping them to uh, write a different story for themselves, you know, um, and to and to clear the obstacles that are keeping them from being all that they can be, being the person that they know that they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like what Joe Dispenza says: changing the habit of being yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So, Love so these, you. these programs, yeah, these programs are just keeping us from, uh, from op being optimal human beings. And so once we can identify something like that, we can begin to work with it. So again, you know, as I said, a lot of it is information medicine. It's like, you know, once you see it, it's like, oh, I get that. Now I can start working on that and I can make a shift.